This episode of Capes and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Hello and welcome back to another week of Who Podcast, The Watchmen. I am Phil. Joining me as always, that... I, he's not Dr. Manhattan, even if he says he is. <laughs> I'm more like, well, you're Phil. That means you're Phil. I was gonna say Don Johnson, but I don't think you want to be Don Johnson at this point. <sighs> so, yes, we're discussing episode two of The Watchmen. Uh, here, I'll bring up the title. It's like a long name. <laughs> yes. Who two is where's the title? Yes, Marshall feats of Comanche horsemanship. Oh yeah, yeah. Mar- feats of yeah Comanche horsemanship because of the painting, I guess. That's what I that's what I guess. As Angela relives haunting memories of an attack on her family, she detains a mysterious man who is Louis Gossett Jr. who claims responsibility for Tulsa's most recent murder. An original play is performed for an audience of one. Um, so yeah, this episode was interesting. I do like, um, that each episode kind of is weird in the sense of where and when the title card will appear. Yeah. Um, cause like this time it was in the, uh, extra opening, which at first, so we, so a uh, past two episodes, we got some sort of flashback, right? Mm-hmm. Of, of something and we see how this ties it in where we get like German propaganda trying to convince African American soldiers to join Germany because it's not racist. Um and we see, you know, one of the soldiers that gets the flyer dumped on him is who we learn in this episode is Will's father. Mm. Who Will is uh Louis Gossett Jr. and he's hundred and seven years old. So, so, he, so he claims, although he also said it might be Dr. Manhattan. Uh, yeah, but I mean, who knows? I mean, this is a, this is a very, um, it is a comic book based show. Like it does have rules that are different. I mean, Dr. Manhattan, really the only super powered person. And yeah. so this episode, it expands some things. Um, it also, I'm just going to call him right now until they officially say it on the show. Um, why am I drawing a point? Jeremy Irons' his character. Just oh, call him Jeremy Irons. Yeah, Adrian. Uh, that's, who, that's who I believe it is, but until they actually say it on the show, because my luck will be wrong. I thought it said on IMDb or somewhere that he, that's who it was. I mean, unless they're. Yeah, but, you know. Let's, but but it, uh, if it is, I'm like, why is he? Re- he's like, yeah, he he's has his minions who I'm, I'm assuming are like clones or something because. Well, we learned that because he burns one alive in his play, and then we see a whole bunch of them. Yeah. And he asks one, "What's your name?" He says, "His name." He says, "Well, you're the new Mr. Phillips." Yeah. One looks like a all the males look alike, and all the females look dissimilar. So. It's almost like, in a way, like. His narrative could, is like the story within the story and could be out of time or – I don't know. It could be meta. It could be out of time. It could be something where – I don't know. It's just – But he looks it, older. He looks older, so time had to have passed. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming it's yeah. 30 years or whatever. Yeah. It just – you know, he could not be attached to anything, you know? Like I don't know. It's just weird. Like it just right now his story is not connecting to the other story. No, and like I don't know why he has his minions putting on the, a play of like basically the origin of Doctor Manhattan. Well, I mean, if he is Vite, he was always kind of obsessed with Doctor Manhattan. Yeah. Because um, in a way, like if you want to draw parallels, Doctor Manhattan, Superman, and um, Vite's Lex Luthor, where 
you know, the other one has something that the one character always wanted and never could have. But it just seems like he, it almost looks. It almost seems like you would do this to like try to figure out a character. And I thought he figured out Doctor Manhattan basically the way he manipulated him in Watchmen. Yeah, but I need to reread the book just because there's beats that are you know that are different that they did in the movie compared to the book yeah. with the uh, the way it ended. So. Oh, I did love that when they're like they, they're talking at the newsstand and the guy's like, "Oh, it's it's Redford raining the squids down on us." They don't want. <laughs> yeah. That, I mean, that was great because it, it kind of calls back to the newspaper and the newsstand. And I mean, it's 2019. Even in Watchmen's world, they have, um, they still have newspapers. And what did you think of that little girl uh, coming for all the newspapers and stuff? Interesting. Kind of curious. She'll play it because he says, "Does she really read all these?" And she says, "Don't you?" Mm-hmm. So. I, just, I do. Okay. I wonder if she's the new Aussie man. This is like she's like the new smartest person alive. Maybe. Um, I was curious about the fact that, um, so we see, so, okay, let's take it back. We see that, uh, we see clips from the white knight, um, when the police were attacked and we see how, um, she got shot. Well, yeah. I mean, well, she took the one, yeah, she took the one down with a knife, but yeah. And then that's another one shot her like from behind. Well, she turned around and he shot her. Because, okay, because that's what I was thinking. There was two people in her house. Yeah. Yeah, because I was trying to track, because she says at the beginning, somebody came in from upstairs and someone came in through the front door. Mm-hmm. Um, but she said somebody's in her house to her husband. So I'm, I wanted to see, like, what happened, like, who took down the other person or whatever, um, the shooter that, you know, that was going to kill her. Yeah, um, unless the cops showed up or something. Well, the cops are getting killed. Um, we learned that a lot of the police force oh, you yeah. know, was attacked that night. That's, we learned about her extended family, her children, being that she took the child or children of her uh, partner. Mm-hmm. That Topher is the child of her partner who was killed that night. Man, I want some uh, of the, like floating Legos. Oh, that was dope. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. I was like, I'm okay. So I'm really particular on the wordage people use. Okay, and in the scene where they meet the current Senator Keene, mm. he makes a reference to her still being a cop, and she says, I'm retired, and he kind of plays it off, but that could mean more. Yeah, I think I think he knows she's still on the force. Right? It seemed like he was just like, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, why would you do that scene if uh... – Well, did you see the previews for next week? No, I have not. Okay, I swear it was like a quick glance, glance, but I swear I saw someone in a cave. Maybe it's like a new night owl or something. I'm wondering if like maybe the senator's like a vigilante. Please bring in night owl. I love night owl. Yeah. Well, I mean, well, I like I like the little history lesson. Like, it'd be cool if they kind of did some structure in each episode. We're seeing maybe bits or like a couple minutes of this segment about, and this one was about hooded justice. Yes. You know, like if in each episode. We, we It builds up to, like, the story of Hooded Justice, all, kind of it reflecting back to the way Hollis Mason's book was peppered through the Watchmen book. Well, we might get a lot more of that because, again, in next week's uh, scenes, they show uh, – guess who shows up? Special Agent uh, Lori Blake. Good. I know she was supposed Blake? to be coming at some point. Mm-hmm. So – but let's – okay. I didn't get a chance to write down all my notes, so like, my brain scattered. Yeah. So we find out that supposedly Will is 107 and the grandfather of our main character, whose first name is escaping me, but it starts with an A. Regina King's character. Oh, we find out, yeah. I don't know why it was like escaping me, yeah. but that's supposedly her grandfather. Well, DNA evidence proved, which was pretty awesome that you could do that in that machine right there. I didn't um, just take a swab and drop it in the machine. We'll call you. Um. Save Maury Povich and uh, Jerry Springer a lot of money and time. They wouldn't really have a show anymore. <laughs> but so that I thought was really interesting. The fact that he's claiming to be the one that hung Judd. We see the flashback of how Angela and Judd bond mm-hmm. more. Like when she wakes up, she calls him Captain. You know, he call he tells her to call him Judd. She addresses call me Angela. Um, and I think that's where they kind of cemented their relationship and their friendship more 
Which is interesting because from evidence she finds later, he's probably the one who told the the cavalry where to find all those cops. Okay, so speaking of the calver, caval, uh, <laughs> cavalry, so I watched it because so my TV had the caption on and I just didn't turn it off. Mm-hmm. Calvary spelled with a K. Uh, well, makes sense. Right? That's what I was like. That's kind of neat. Like, um, and so basically, I, you know, this was something I saw online that, pe- that people post is like they took the character of Rorschach, and now if anybody cosplays as Rorschach, they're gonna be tied to this series. Mm. People are gonna think they're a white supremacist. So in a way, they've ruined the character of Rorschach. I mean, and I I get that. Like if it was in a book. It wouldn't catch on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if this was a after Watchmen graphic novel. Yeah, but like if you were the if you were the hat and like his coat and stuff, I mean he was I I know, but still the idea the idea is still kinda there because those Rorschach masks that they have Mm -hmm. like on the show look exactly like uh years ago a Rorschach ski mask that I tried on a hot topic. Uh yeah. There's a picture of me somewhere with it on. It looks almost identical to it. Um so it just kind of like, man, you, you're right. But also, can we just say that Looking Glass is pretty much the modern Rorschach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, he looks like a more cowboyed Rorschach. Like the mask is very similar, the way he talks, the way he walks, the way he lifts his mask and acts. Even the scene where he's like eating his TV dinner. Oh, yeah. Of Rorschach eating yeah. the beans. Yeah, now that you say that, yeah. And like that was my thought. Um, I was like, man, like, and Looking Glass, just because of his look and aesthetic, like, is the character I like. Mm. Just, I love that mask. Oh yeah. Um, but we saw they live in Nixonville. A lot of the white supremacist people, they love Nixon and their little uh club. Oh, good lord. Yeah, that was a uh, messed up. And then we got a big thing dropped on us, which so. Angela goes to the house of Judd. Oh yeah, after her uh, after her grandfather, who she didn't know was her grandfather at the time, says he has skeletons in his closet. So she checks his closet. <laughs> but I guess in the world of comic books and uh, comic books and superheroes, you know, it kind of reminds me of Rorschach and Blake's closet. You know, discovering the comedian. Oh yeah. But she opens it and he- finds like a Ku Klux Klan. Uh, complete with a badge. Yeah. So, which is interesting because it makes me wonder. Like, I feel like the Calvary just replaced the clan. That's what I'm saying. I think he was, he probably still at least had ties with them. Or it'd be a twist if it was his wife. But you know, I, I wonder because that night, that white night that they, he said they went after what 40 cops. Yeah. We know we know Angela is, but I wonder if. All of those cops were cops of color, or I wonder if he just sent them after cops and ge- just the cops in general. Yeah, like, I, I mean, it's definitely thought provoking because it makes me wonder if some of the cops they have now they had to bring in from other areas because all the cops quit. And we'll see like flashbacks or whatever of the rise of the cops in masks. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, it just it's very intriguing if that is him or if I don't and, know. And why do you think he 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 supposedly he was he, you know they were all they were close and stuff. Why was he if he was this clan member basically? Why was he so close to her? Right. Did he need something from her? Did he want something from? Her? Well, I mean, is he just controlling both sides? Mm. Like you know he he has that power trip of he is. You know, the leader of both groups. Um, Unless he was just keeping her around as a patsy. If something went wrong, you could blame it on her or something. I don't know. I, yeah, exactly. Like, it just, it doesn't feel right. Um, it's a mystery. It also, like, looking at the way they filmed, like, how did, okay, so she knocked, on the white night, she took out her husband. She, like, knocked him down. She got the one guy, and then she had a gun over her. We don't see that it. If it's her husband who stops him, yeah, no, because she the shooter yeah. was, or what yeah. happens. All we know is she wakes up in the hospital. Yeah, yeah. So there could have been somebody as the shooter, um, or the shooter, just, uh, the shooter. Maybe the shooter just ran, thinking she was dead. Maybe 
Right. Like, I feel like there is more to it, but I don't know. Something feels off. Um, it's interesting. It feels, it's starting to feel a little watch many, but just because of like things that they like did with like the way they structured the story with like hooded justice and even the newspaper stand and yeah. And it, just the stuff in the, you know, next week's stuff, it looks like it's going to get more and more watchmen. Yeah. They're building to it. I think. Cause I mean, I, I just, it would have, I don't know. It'd be neat if they addressed like the hero, like the costumes is like, like it's just like the detective class that are like half the code names compared to how all the other police. And like I told you, I would have almost preferred if she would have been retired police and had been just operating as a vigilante. Oh yeah. Instead of a police officer, you know, you have the police, just the regular police are all in, you know, the yellow masks. Well, at least this way she's authorized. Cause I mean, like in Nixonville, she beat the crap out of that guy. Oh yeah. So uh, I don't know. It's, it's a interesting. I think it might be a, one of those shows that when it's done, I might just sit back and watch like in a binge. Yeah, it might be thing. like a binge, yeah. Because I feel like it's almost like unfolding like you're reading the book. So it might I think it would be better because okay. just like if you read Watchmen the book, you get stuff where you're like, man, this is pointless or man, this is boring. But then when you're done, you're like, okay, I kind of see why that was there. Once you I, have the I, whole story. Yeah, and I know that original book is classic, but that pirate stuff never really did much for me. It's one of those things. I think I read the pirate stuff, and I read everything mm. the first time I read it. And then when I reread it, I skipped the pirate stuff and the Hollis Mates and stuff. Like, and I think maybe when I go back and re- reread it again, I might read it all just to see, because I feel like you get more out of it, mm-hmm. like parallels when you kind of get the idea, but the first time you're reading it, you just want the core story. And I haven't read it in so long, but I've seen the movie so many times. Yeah. And I've always liked the fact in the movie they it was the idea of Dr. Manhattan turning against people. You know, and in a way it kind of makes it smart because it forces Manhattan off of Earth. Yeah. But we'll see. That's all right. I, so if, if it squids this time, I wonder why Manhattan la- – well – well, it's just like because in the in the book he states, you know, I want to go to my yeah. own universe and look at creating life or something. And but he's just on Mars. <laughs> yeah, right now he's just on Mars. So although if he comes back, because they show, I think in the previews too, they showed like some kind of big building, like fancy looking building or something. So I don't know if he like builds some, you know, comes back and builds it or. Well, we did get to see Doctor Manhattan in this episode in the play, blue accessory and all. I know. That's what I was thinking. I was like, whether that's like, I don't think that was the real thing. That had to be a fake, right? But still, it's like, <laughs> even if there's something covering it, someone's like painting over your junk. Exactly. Like, and, and, this is, and, and, it's not, and it's not airbrushed. <laughs> I mean, I, I guess it's one of the clones. So it's like they're painting their own junk. Like, But yeah, like I was like, man, because I thought it was weird. Like he's all painted blue, but then he has like a painted fencing helmet. As like a mask, and I'm like, you just didn't finish him off. Like you could have shaved his head and painted him blue. So I know, probably shaved everything else but his head. <laughs> but no, I just I <sighs> just the poor makeup person. Just like I didn't sign up for this. So I, I don't. It's very interesting. Yeah, yeah, a lot going on here. Uh, a lot of stuff where you're just kind of like, huh? Yeah. Well, and then they're like they're building. You're like, okay, next next time. Yeah, like that's the thing. Like they're building, but I. In one way, I would like a little bit more just because I am interested, but I'm not like, oh, man, Watchmen comes on tonight. You know, I'm like, okay, Watchmen was on. I'll, I'll watch it. You know, I'm not I'm not hyped for it yet. Like, I'm just kind of like, oh. Yeah, okay. I've, been watch- I've been watching it the next day because I've been watching Walking Dead because we usually watch Walking Dead together. Yeah, Sunday night's packed. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Nine o'clock especially. Walking Dead, Supergirl, Watchmen. Exactly. And then if people like the football, that's on too. Yeah, people like football, I guess. I mean, yeah, I, guess. I had a lady today at work who asked me if she was talking about watching football. I said, I, I don't know. She said, you don't watch football? I said, no. She looked at me for like two minutes, just dead stare. I'm like, what? Yeah, I know. It's, big. it's big here in Pittsburgh. I mean, I watch it sometimes because, you know, Daniel likes I have a, it. Luca likes to watch it. 
I'm like, I have a Superman tattooed on my chest. Do I look like I watch football a lot? <laughs> like, I'm sorry, people, but they run the same like four or five plays. Mm-hmm. That's same. what we should do, Phil. We should just do a podcast where we just commentate a football game and be like, what is this? Like, what's going on? <laughs> but that dude just threw a long pass to another dude. I just, I wish, like we had talked about before, that, that they would incorporate maybe some more of like the history of the world of Watchmen. Like with the before Watchmen stuff, but you know, this is definitely like if you look like a third volume like after Watchmen. I almost wish there was a parallel story, not just the Adrian story, the Jeremy Iron story, but like another character like in New York City or something that's going on with this that eventually will cause it to collide because it just feels so weird being in Tulsa. I just well, I wonder if that's a, a plot device too to to, to explain why the here all the masks weren't there day one. That once the crap starts hitting the fan, then the and the vigilantes start coming to Oklahoma. I mean, because when I mean, you see the, all the stuff spawn from the police force, so it just means like, what's the rest of the world look like with with this? Well, if Lori's coming in, and then I wonder if like if we do see a new night owl, everyone's gonna be like, oh, it's Dan, and she'd be like, no. Too old. He's either he's either old or dead, and it's gonna be like that's not him. He's old and fat. Well, he was young and fat, but yeah. Exactly. Now he's just old and fat, or he's old and super frail, skinny. Like you know, sometimes old guys get with like just like bones. To where now he just can be like blown over with air. Or like I said, he might be dead. Night Owl Three. We've had Night Owl, Night Owl Two. Now it's time for Night Owl Three. Thirty. Oh yeah. Oh, what if they had a kid? Yeah, I think we said that last time. It's been thirty Mm -hmm. years. It's been enough time. Okay. I mean, Watchmen took place in 85. I was born in 85, Phil. So, yeah. It's been a, it's been enough time. Yes, sir. But, man, a lot of, like, uh, talk about the package. I mean, we talked about Dr. Manhattan and then, like, Angela's husband, man. That's a Christmas present. I was like, man. Dog is a medical term. <laughs> I'm like, he, uh. He's probably more mad about not only did they shoot his uh, him and his wife, but he's like, man, this was going to a good place. I know. I was about to get lucky, man. I was about to. Ha- I was about to. I was about to be like. I was about, about to, to bring love in my Christmas. wife and get a cri- big Christmas present. He's like, I was about to brag that I started on Christmas Eve and finished on Christmas Day. <laughs> you ruined it. <laughs> but no, I, I like his character because I like I like the kind of rule reversal of like he. Seems that like he's at home a lot with the kids, and she's, you know, as the police officer. Because mm-hmm. he even says, without even being said, like, "Hey, I'll will keep the kids tonight." You know, mm-hmm. there's a friends meeting for Judd. Um, and I'm wondering once once this is over, and like the season wraps, if we go back and rewatch it, if we'll pick up on more stuff. Uh, like maybe no there's problem. like hidden visual clues and things to what's going on that we don't notice or see because. We're not looking for him yet. But I think we asked last week about, you know, if he knows about her, you know. Her oh, dad. yeah, we did. I, which, which he, which I think we got confirmed because he was like, are we safe now? Yeah, he did. Like, he, he confirmed it and he said, you know, you're going to take him in. Oh, you didn't take him in. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. And, but. So, do you think the 105 year old guy hung Judd himself or. I don't know. Like he's talking in metaphors, right? Exactly. But then he also states that he's got friends in high places, and when she puts oh, him in a car, oh, uh, we did see that. Yeah, the giant magnet comes down and picks her car, <laughs> picks the car up and takes him away. So he does have some sort of friend in a high place or something. So. So who is that? So there is something going on. Is it masks or is it like a uh, anti-cavalry group? The Calvarists. Spell with a C. Oh my lord, it'd be funny if you should just see like sixty or seventy like hundred year old black guys. <laughs> They're like they all been taking these pills, man. That's like the secret of the fountain. I'm... So that's all made from Doctor Manhattan. Mm. <laughs> like would Doctor Manhattan bleed? So like if they took Doctor Manhattan's blood, or does he not have blood anymore? Is it made like pure you know, like pure energy now? Pretty much, because he after the accident he had to like rebuild himself. Yeah, and even at the end of the movie, like you know, remember Light like what blew him up and he just like rebuilt himself again. Yeah, man, 
I need to pull out the book. So, so he's, so he's, so Dr. Manhattan is just pure ego because one, he could wear clothes. Two, if he's building his body from scratch, he doesn't need to give himself a dong until he needs it. So he's just walking around with a, with it hanging, flopping in the breeze because he wants to. Dong is a medical term. Dong is a medical term. Fighting nerds. It's, it's like wacko. It's a medical term. And if you know where that's from, good for you. But I mean, again, yeah. Pure ego, Dr. Manhattan. Be gentle with the package. I mean, Dr. Manhattan could definitely be like... He could yeah. be a Ken doll until he needs it, you know? Yeah. I mean, and honestly... He really doesn't need it. Honestly, like, from a character point of view, the way he can rebuild and change himself, but the fact that he feels so less human and not human, I'd almost see him removing it. He feels unattached from... Yeah. 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 You know what I'm saying? Because, like, it makes him kind of human. So, like, if he would, like, take it away. Well, here, I'll throw Charlie a bone because he has a problem with Alan Moore. Uh, it's, uh, that's just Alan Moore saying, man, if you had, had the powers of a god, I'd walk around naked. I mean, yeah. Who's going to Who's going who's gonna to stop? Who's gonna, yeah. Well, pretty soon, Superman. Man, that's going to. Look, I'm all about Superman. You know this. Yeah. You can see behind me. <laughs> But Superman versus Dr. Manhattan, it's got to be more of a battle of wits, like in like morality, yeah. more than physical. Because, look, Superman does have weakness, does have like, you know, he has a source of power. Dr. Manhattan, we have not seen a weakness. And can, he, anything. Cre- and can create, he can create other like he can create like different forms of radiation, right? Why can't he just make kryptonite? Right. Exactly. OK. Or he could open a black hole when Superman comes out and just like send him to like a, he could, you know, maybe he even touched the Phantom Zone and just, although he, like Superman into hole, like you know the scene in the Matrix where Neo's in the train station and just keeps running. Yeah, exactly. But you know what? Speaking of Doomsday Clock, which we are doing, uh, breaking news. I did see supposedly the last issue is supposed to be out on I think December eighteenth. Merry Christmas, Phil. So they're basically like, yeah, like it pretty much. Because like, are they shipping books on December 25th? Because that's the, I think that's the actual last Wednesday. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the last Wednesday. Yeah, but are they shipping books? Because I swear they were, I, the article I was reading, they're like, oh yeah, it's supposed to come out on December 18th, which is basically the last week they can put it out for it to be out in 2019. Yeah, because I don't think they would, they'd have to ship books and have them hit, like ship them, and then they wouldn't come out to like the 26th or something. Or I don't because I know one year, I think, was it Christmas, was it Wednesday, the Christmas day, or it was close, but I know, I think there was like, I don't think DC, DC either didn't put anything out, or only one or two, and I think that's when Marvel put out like Amazing Spider-Man 700, I think that's like one of the only things they put out that week. I don't know, I just... If I remember one, yeah, there was one one year, the week of Christmas, day, there was only like, I only got like one or two books, because that's all that was out. I just feel like, I don't know, it just... I'm like, this Doomsday Clock Man started at the time that Justice League came out, the film. Yeah. And here we are, almost two years later. Oh, they're soliciting the first that, that the first great paperback, which I think is supposed to come out before the last issue comes out. <laughs> I don't know why they would even split it into two trade paperbacks and not just drop it as all 12, like Watchmen is, all 12 issues. Yeah, I guess, but I mean, they, they might do like a hardcover or some. I'm sure they'll do some version where the whole thing's collected. But I mean, I think first they're just doing uh two smaller ones because. Oh uh, yeah, exactly. And I'll probably eventually buy the, like 12 issue collection. And just one paperback. Be cool to have like next to like Watchmen, Doomsday Clock. And I'm probably what should buy eventually the before watching like do they have like an omnibus? What omnibus? What? Like with all the before watchmen stories in one collective trade? I can't remember. I think I think well they well we know they collected each series, but I don't know if they yeah. an omnibus. That, Cause I would love to have it in an omnibus. That's a fun word to say. Omnibus. All right. Well, we got anything else to say? Um, I don't think. Have you been enjoying this? So, 
you still here for Watchmen? Yes. Oh wait, uh, before Watchmen Omnibus popped up in Google search. That's that's what I'm that's what I'm searching on. Uh, I have something. Oh wait, here we go. Uh, uh, collects before Watchmen, Comedian, Rorschach, Minutemen, Silk Spectre, Night Owl, Doctor Manhattan, Moloch, Ozymandias, Crimson Corsair, One and Dollar Bill. Yeah, so I think it. Uh, I think it collects all the before Watchmen stuff. Oh, it's only one hundred twenty-five dollars. Where are you looking? Um. Oh, I think this is actually DC's website. Yeah, it's right. under the graphic novels and on DCComics.com. But yeah, I guess it came out last December. Hold on, I want to send you something. But yeah, it looks like all the before Watchmen uh, miniseries collected in one thing for one hundred twenty-five dollars, and it's, it is a hardcover. I'm sending you something now. <sighs> For all those people out there, because there's one here on Amazon that doesn't come out till November 2nd, and uh, yeah, so man, that's my list. What is it? Uh, let me see, omnibus. Yeah, I think that's the one I was looking at. Yeah, at least that's what that's what that's the picture they had on the website. How yeah, much, how much is that? 64.88. Oh, okay, then yeah, maybe it's on sale. For how because it says $125 slash, yeah, um, comes out November 2nd. Okay, cool. I'm buying that. Yeah, I was gonna say that's brand because then yeah. I can have them buy each other, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I'll have I was gonna say too, maybe even when the show goes off, maybe at least once or twice a month, we'll do some more before Watchmen issues. Yeah, we need to do before Watchmen, and we, it'd be fun to kind of review the movie and talk about it. Yeah, like, we'll, do, like, we'll do the uh original series after we do the before Watchmen stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, we done for uh, tonight? I think so. All right. So, everyone, send us your thoughts on uh, before watch. <laughs> I was going to say before Watchmen. Yeah, send us your thoughts on before Watchmen, wa- Watchmen. After before Watchmen, Night. regular Watchmen, <laughs> any Watchmen. Tuesday clock, yeah. But, yes, especially this HBO series, uh, send all your thoughts, capesandlunatics at gmail.com. Call our voicemail, 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And remember to find all of our social media links at linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R, dot E-E, slash Capes and Lunatics. And Tyler, where can people talk Superman with you? Uh, we are over at Krypton Report Pod. Uh, we talk Superman, Supergirl. We're really excited about some super news today that we'll be discussing tomorrow, James and I. And you can find us anywhere. Just look for Krypton Report Pod. You're all things super. On that note. On that note, let's get out of here. So, yes, everyone, stay tuned. Like I said, it's like we're getting uh, Lori Blake using her father Negan's last name. Uh, I swear I saw Kate figure. Please be night out. I wouldn't be surprised if they, at some for some version of the night out, came in to like try to clean up these uh, cavalry men, you know. For, oh, I mean, I would spit, totally. I mean, spitting on the image of uh, Warshack. I mean, yeah, because I mean, they were friends. They were. If it's the same night out. So yeah, come back next week for episode three. Send us your thoughts. Rate them. Until then, 